We all know that South Africa is a land of incredible diversity, but the issues of racism that existed in the past can still be found in our society today. Because of the racial inequalities that we still face today, many South African students do not have access to quality science education. In 2016, CIFES gave students a chance to travel back in time and see that despite our perceived differences, there is a shared humanity between us. communicate more complex things or even things like oh you can you can build tools or you use tools right well we know other animals use tools as well and they can manipulate their environment and it's, it's interesting what does make us maybe maybe actually what makes us who we are is that we ask that question I have, I have no idea but it's not it, it has become abundantly clear to me that uh, that is not a question that you can answer easily you know when you're a kid and you you constantly ask why, why, and and then you also ask where am I from? We're fascinated by ourselves. In fact, maybe we shouldn't put it like that because that's kind of quite self-centered. But we are fascinated with where we came from. The idea is to get them to look at the same things a scientist would look at if he was looking at these skulls and to find out for themselves those trends that scientists have used to create the evolutionary trees. So we want them to actually feel the skulls, to look at them closely and make some measurements for themselves instead of just being told about it. Our urge as humans to know ourselves has pushed decades of research. Sadly, lots of people have tried to use science as a tool to promote racism. The measuring of skulls and other improper experiments were some of the techniques used to support the belief in a racial hierarchy with Europeans at the top. So doesn't this mean that science and evolution promote racism? There are some fundamentalists who dislike the idea of evolution and human evolution and kind of send, send out seeds of misinformation to them. Darwin is... is is talked about like an absolute hero. And the guy was a genius, but some of the stuff he said was incredibly racist. And, and actually a lot of people don't know that and you kind of have to point it out to them. Um, but you know what, this is 2016 and it's, and it's about looking at paleoanthropology today. Um, and what it tells us, and actually what it tells us is, is some really fascinating stuff. So science doesn't promote racism, but disproves racist ideas. This is because science is ever-changing as research brings into light new evidence. The traditional picture of evolution that we all know has been replaced by a more complex family tree. The idea of one group being more advanced than the other group has been disproven. You can see an argument for, this is my tribe, that's your tribe. Historically, you know, it's, it's in our DNA that we will always fight each other. And, th and there might be an argument for that. But what we also find is that we crossed the fence loads. We were interbreeding loads, you know? Like, we were interbreeding with other species. If I'm interbreeding with a Neanderthal, if my DNA is up to like three or 4% Neanderthal, do you want me to believe that my ancestry, people weren't mixing? If, if we were willing to go all the way to another species, then, then there's really, I think that says a lot about race. I think the other thing uh, to say about race is that, um, uh, certainly from the genetic perspective, there's no such thing as race. There's populations. There is more similarity between us as populations than, than there is difference in terms of genetic diversity. There is no such thing as race, according to geneticists and paleoanthropologists. But it is obvious that all around us, there is a great diversity. Skin tone, facial features, height, sexual orientation, and many other human characteristics differ greatly from person to person. These differences can be understood and measured by scientists 
because within the nucleus of every cell of our body, we find DNA. Four basic molecules combine in countless ways to write the code of who we are. This doesn't mean that certain groups are inferior to others. In fact, science claims the opposite. There's like over 27 genes that determine what colour you are. Um, the others and like, so many genes that influence like your height, the this, that and the other. But the thing is, genes isn't the whole story. So for example, you might have the genes that in combination will make you tall, but then if you're malnutritioned, you're not going to be tall. Um, you, you might be the next Albert Einstein in terms of, you know, you might have the, the genes that make you really, really smart and intelligent, but if you're in a stunted environment, you've got other priorities. With South Africa's history of racial segregation, many people of colour still live in conditions where a strong science education is not prioritised. This lack of skills development has not only perpetuated racial stereotypes, but holds back scientific potential from which we could all benefit. Imagine if the, the guy that, the person that cures cancer is, is somebody that just can't afford to go to school. So you can't predict where the next discovery comes from and you can't predict who the next genius is. And so you need to be getting people out there and people from really a diverse, back, diverse background to appreciate all aspects of science and to see where they end up. Um, otherwise you're, you're really doing humanity such a disservice.